please give a warm welcome to Captain William R. Sherrod. Well, good afternoon and thank you. Uh, thank you for gathering here today. Dr. Larson, I appreciate you inviting me to be a part of today's ceremony. Uh, it's a humbling honor to stand before those of you that are here today to take pause and remember the service and sacrifice of our nation's veterans. When I asked what I should speak about today, I was told, share a story from my service. I spent some time thinking about it, and although I'm fortunate enough to have served in every theater of operation um, and de deploy and to every, nearly every continent, at heart I'm just, as you heard, a ship driver and a helo pilot. And that's just not that exciting. But I've been blessed to serve alongside some remarkable men and women for over 25 years. Instead, I want to take a minute to talk about the service of some others, particularly some sons of New Jersey. Clarence Bennett, William Pacino, and Robert Beavis. Private Clarence Bennett is indeed a son of New Jersey, originally from Oakhurst. He enlisted in the New Jersey National Guard July 12, 1917 at Asbury Park. He was assigned to Company H, 3rd Infantry, as part of the 114th Infantry Regiment. And he was but one of over a million soldiers serving as the American Expeditionary Forces during the Meuse-Argonne Offensive during World War I. This was the final Allied offensive of World War I and started in late September of 1918. Private Bennett made the ultimate sacrifice during an engagement at Bois de Armand on October 12, 1918, just one month prior to the armistice that would take effect on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. William Bacino is the son of an immigrant and a self-professed troubled kid from South Bronx. He graduated from high school in 1944 and joined the Navy serving as a radioman and gunner on the heavy cruiser USS Macon. He served for four years, and at the conclusion of the war, he attended New York University on his GI Bill, where he got a degree in electrical engineering, and then also joined the Army Reserve Officer Training Corps program. He went to jump school down in Fort Benning, became airborne, and then went back to school and went to Harvard on a scholarship and earned his MBA. He was then assigned as a platoon leader as an infantry officer to serve the Korean augmentation to the United States Army during the Korean conflict. His storied service is one of unique missions that bear semblance of today's irregular warfare, often working away from conventional troops, behind enemy lines, clandestine maneuvers to help turn the tide of that conflict. He returned home after a year of daring missions to earn his doctorate from NYU and eventually became a professor at Farley Dickinson University, where he remained until his retirement. Robert Beavis hails from a military family, and their experiences sparked his desire to serve and to serve as a naval aviator. While attending Villanova University, he completed the United States Marine Corps' platoon leaders course before reporting for flight training in 1964, earning his naval aviator's wings of gold in 1966, he transitioned to learn how to fly the F-8 Crusader with VMF-235, and after a short tour in Boca Chica, Key West, standing guard against uh, the spread of, of communism in Cuba, he was deployed to, with his unit to Da Nang, Vietnam. His service is also filled with amazing stories of daring and intrepid airmanship, earning him the, the Distinguished Flying Cross, but it also the service with Marines on the ground as a forward air controller. We're engaged in combat action. He took a serious wound to the abdomen, took a fistful of mud, shoved it in his gut, and continued to fight so the Marines could win the day. He was evac'd and then set on the long road of recovery to get back in the cockpit as a Marine aviator. And eventually he did. He left active service in 1969, continued as a Marine Corps Reserve officer, was an airline pilot for 34 years, 
and retired as colonel and the former commander of MAG-49, previously stationed at NAS Willow Grove, and now currently assigned to Joint Base McGuire-Dix Lakehurst. When asked of his service, Beavis explained, the Marine Corps gave me the training to be a pilot, and that training provided me a way of life. So I know, owe not only the Corps, but the nation a debt of gratitude. It was well worth the investment, so Semper Fi. Semper Fi indeed. When you think of the stories of these three veterans, a few things stand out. First of all, they think of themselves as just average Americans, doing their duty to their buddies next to them, protecting their families back home, and defending their nation's honor. They integrate back into the fabric of our society and become the professors, pilots, plumbers, policemen that serve as leaders in our communities. Lastly, they are humble. Warrior heroes who did their duty without fanfare or pursuit of accolade. You know who you are. Many of you are here now. Sacrifice so others would not. And it's for them on this day and every day that we are grateful and we remember. In closing, I share the words of Miss Florence Bennett, the sister of Private Clarence Bennett, who wrote a poem shortly after his death in the fall of 1918. When I think of how he went so bravely, his place in that line he so proudly held, with footsteps that had never faltered, there on the France battlefield he fell. I think of him in silence, and his name I often recall, only to see his picture on the wall. I had pictured his safe return, but his life to his country he gave. Thank you to the men and women who served before us. Those of us who serve today, we are honored to stand on the shoulders of giants. For those who are seeking an opportunity to make a difference and be a part of something greater than yourself, I challenge you to see where and how you can serve your community, your state, or your nation. Like that sign up on the wall, you get what you put into it. Your service matters. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for being here today. God bless America.